At this time, we welcome the families of Colonel Shane Smith and Colonel Christopher Gifford. On behalf of Colonel Jason M. Brown, Commander, 480th Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance Wing, welcome to today's ceremony. I am Master Sergeant Melissa Beam, and I will be your narrator for today's ceremony. In regards to customs and courtesies, this will be treated as an indoor ceremony with salutes, re with salutes rendered at the appropriate times. You will be prompted to stand on several occasions. At this time, the 497th ISR Group would like to extend a special welcome to family members, our distinguished visitors, and special guests. Please hold your applause until all have been announced. 480th Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance Wing Commander, wife, Miss Allie Brown. Vice Commander, 480th Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance Wing, Colonel Scott Roth. Command Chief, 480th Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance Wing, Chief Master Sergeant John Thompson. Guard Advisor to Commander, 480th Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance Wing, Colonel Rodney Burkle. Technical Director, 480th Intelligence Director, Surveillance, excuse me, Technical Director, 480th Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance Wing, Mr. Don Hudson. Sorry, sir, I had to do that one to you. Cryptologic Advisor, 480th Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance Wing, Ms. Doris Carter. Vice Commander, 633rd Air Base Wing, Colonel Herbert Joliot. Command Chief, 633rd Air Base Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Kenan Arnold. Vice Commander, 363rd Intelligence Surveillance and Reconnaissance Wing, Colonel Brian Kravitz. Commander, 633rd Medical Group, Colonel Susan Petr Petrakowski messed it up anyway. Commander, 633rd Mission Support Group, Colonel David Stanfield. Commander, 659 T Intelligence Surveillance and Reconnaissance Group, Colonel Jacob McManus. Deputy Director of Intelligence, Joint Special Operations Command, Colonel Douglas Smith and his wife Krista. Commander, 181st Intelligence Surveillance and Reconnaissance Group, Air National Guard, Colonel Michael Holmes, and a special welcome to Colonel Smith's wife, Selena. We would also like to extend a special welcome to Colonel Gifford's family, his wife, Becky Bigler Gifford, and their children, Jack and Olivia, his father-in-law, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Richard Bigler, mother-in-law, Diana Bigler, his uncle, James Gifford, and cousin, Elise Gifford. Additionally, we would like to extend a warm welcome to commanders, chiefs, first sergeants, civil servants, friends, family, and special guests. Once again, it is a pleasure to welcome you today to witness the change of command for the 497th ISR group, where Colonel Smith will relinquish command to Colonel Gifford. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the presentation of the colors, the singing of the national anthem, and the invocation. Four. Four. Four.
Thank you, Sergeant Bishop. Chaplain Gordon will now provide the invocation. Would you join me in prayer? Almighty God, we ask your blessing on this change of command ceremony for the 497th Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance Group. Bless those gathered here and grant us your strength and wisdom as the responsibility of leadership for the 497th is changed. Thank you for Colonel Shane Smith and his command these past two years. Thank you for his deep appreciation of history, his ability to communicate our fit into the bigger picture, and his knack for cutting to the core of any matter. Thank you for his focus on the mission and desire to leave DGS-1 a better place for airmen to excel. As Colonel Smith passes the guide on this morning, we ask you to bless him and in your sovereignty, expand his impact for the mission of the Air Force and the people he continues to influence. Bless Colonel Smith and his wife, Selena, through this transition and in the days ahead. Lord, the men and women of the 497th ask your blessing on our new commander, Colonel Christopher Gifford. As you have equipped him each step of his career and placed him in this position of leadership, enable him to lead us well. Give him clear vision for the group's direction, both in mission fulfillment and the shaping of the people of the 497th. Grant him success as the guide on his path from leader to leader and embraced with courage. Be with Colonel Gifford, his wife Becky, and their children Jack and Olivia through this transition. In the midst of work's busy demands, please bless the family, bless the Giffords with the balance between work and home life. Now Lord, we invoke your blessing on this ceremony Bless Colonel Gifford's leadership of the group. Help each of us to honor those who lead the 497th with our respect and best efforts. We pray all of this in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Gordon. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Okay, everybody, good morning. Uh, I wanted first to just say thank you to uh, all those airmen here who have put this together. Putting one of these together is never easy. It's a lot of work. Uh, the good news is it's all downhill from here. Uh, thank you, by the way, for having an indoor ceremony. Thank you uh, to the Bayview for making sure the, uh, the air conditioner works. Uh, it's, uh, it's great to see all these people here. Um, you know, fellow commanders, uh, vice commanders, uh, just from our TFI units, from the Indiana contingent and, and others, uh, Skull Smith, I saw you earlier, man, brother, it's good to see you, and uh, just wanted to say welcome, uh, Chiefs, um, great to have you here. So, uh, I wasn't here a couple years ago, but I heard there was a, a bald man from Tennessee on this stage. Who, who said, quote, we will fertilize the battlefield with the blood of our enemies. <laughs> and um, he wasn't kidding. Uh, so after two years, 7.7 thousand sorties, 90,000 products, uh, 800 strikes, 546 targets, uh, all of that, um, plus much, much more, ISIS is in retreat, and there is no unit in the Department of Defense more responsible for that than the 497th ISR group. Uh, there is no man more responsible than that, than Colonel Shane Smith. And, um, you know, when Shane got here a couple years ago, uh, he knew he was going to be busy. He didn't, now, of course, he knows just how busy he was going to be. So he was going to be busy doing a lot of things, commanding and directing an ISR group with over 1,600 personnel, total force personnel, uh, guard, reserve, active duty, civilians, contractors, um, leading the ops and maintenance of a $750,000 distributed ground station, uh, doing 24-7 network operations across eight networks, 238 servers, managing a $1.4 million budget, uh, numerous weapon system updates, uh, some of them were harder than others, right? Um, but that's not what kept them busy. What kept them busy was making this mission and these airmen better, better at what they do, uh, making this mission, uh, taking it to absolutely new heights, 
uh, he, he invested so much time and energy into, frankly, just making everything better. Uh, $2 million of facility project improvements to include uh, the new operational medical element. Our airmen are going to be in their facility being able to see medical professionals as part of the Air, Airman Resiliency Team right there where they work as a result. Uh, remodeling the lobby, creating an innovation lab, uh, realigning 600 positions as we did GEOINT specialization, massive muscle movement to get that done, uh, and then rebuilding and continually improving the crew scheduling and the crew, the crewing of our airmen to get them the time and space and resources they need uh, to become better. He focused on what I call the three R's related to the mission, right? Which fundamentally comes down to getting the right intel to the right person at the right time. So these airmen are working right now with our uh, forces in the Middle East with uh, F-22s and they're uh, going toe to toe with the Russians. Uh, they're finding targets uh, on the battlefield, left and right. Um, they've turned hunting ISIS drone teams into a sport. And, um, you know, they continue to just completely become, as I call it, problem-centric. They focus on the problem, and they focus on creatively finding ways to solve problems. They don't get locked into, you know, uh, process. And every squadron is, uh, you know, um, does that in remarkable ways. The 10th Intelligence Squadron has integrated communications, logistics, and sustainment airmen into our operations in ways that no other unit in our wing has done, in ways that no, no one has seen before. The 45th has owned the medium altitude mission in a way where they are leading it. They are directing uh, where those aircraft are going and, and um, the intelligence that they're producing and making the absolute most of it. The 30th Intelligence Squadrons work in high altitude ISR missions against the most serious threat our Air Force has ever faced. Um, and they do that all while finding targets on the battlefield for uh, our aircraft to hit. And then finally, the OSS, they do such incredible work integrating all of the pieces together. If you want to go just get blown away, go find an A1C in the OSS and just have a conversation. And they will talk about the battlefield thousands of miles away like it was their own neighborhood. They know it that well. Um, Shane was also busy focusing on the three R's as I, as I refer to the airmen, which is making sure our airmen feel uh, relevant, resilient, and ready. So um, there's no question these airmen that stand before us are relevant. Uh, we have CJTF OIR um, leadership come through here consistently. Uh, it was uh, phenomenal to see uh, the J3 uh, not too long ago, an Army One Star, who came in and, uh, you know, as, as Shane was telling him when we had a blizzard back in January, and we knew that we were going to have uh, 11 inches of snow, it turned out, in eight hours. So Shane, <laughs> Shane made the airmen sleep in the, sleep in the building, right, with, on cots eating MREs because he knew they weren't going to be, be able to make it in the next day, and uh, the mission had to go on. And you should have seen the eyes of that general just light up. And, um, you know, we've had continual um, leaders coming through. Uh, in fact, uh, next week we have the Deputy J2 for CJTFOIR coming through. He's a, 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 a Brit, a Royal Navy captain, uh, who's making, making it all the way over here because he keeps hearing, you've got to see DGS-1, you've got to see what those airmen are doing, you've got to see what they do uh, for, uh, for the warfighter. Uh, they are unquestionably um, more resilient uh, than ever. Uh, there's an airman resiliency team here at DGS-1 who does remarkable work, and there are airmen on this earth today because that airman resiliency team has put so much time and energy into making sure when airmen have needs, uh, medical, spiritual, mental, that they are taken care of. Um, they are leading the conversation across the DOD and this concept called remote combat stress. There is nobody uh, who is more uh, both prolific in, in, in delivering that message and recognized now as an expertise. We literally just had a New Yorker reporter come through. We've had um, folks from NPR. This is national news that this Airman Resiliency Team is making because of the work that they're doing under Shane's uh, leadership. And then finally, uh, these airmen uh, are continually 
uh, becoming more and more ready because of the creative things uh, that Shane and his squadron commanders have been able to do over the course of the last two years. Still a lot of room, uh, you know, for improvement. And but Shane has done everything to include, you know, bending the rules and making sure his commanders knew uh, what kind of freedom they had to bend those rules to make sure those airmen had the time and space and resources to educate, to rejuvenate, and you know, fundamentally to innovate, to become better airmen, to deal with those threats, to deal with the Russians, to deal with ISIS. That's all about readiness, and uh, we're going through some. Um, through some planning right now to continue to do that, to get more airmen, uh, you know, time off to basically do the kind of continuation training that they need to be ready to deal with those threats. Shane and his squadron commanders and these airmen are leading the way across our wing in that regard. So what I've been told is that every man from Texas should thank a man from Tennessee. So, uh, so since I'm from Texas, there's a man from Tennessee here, uh, I'm going to say thanks. Thanks to you and Celine for everything you've done for these, for these airmen, for this mission, and uh, for me, and for all of us uh, on the wing staff in our wing. Uh, it, it, you have made an unbelievable impact to our Air Force and to our nation, Shane. Many thanks. And so you're not going too far organizationally speaking. They're going to 25th Air Force in Texas, where everybody will be, I guess, thanking you all the time, right? So, um, but something else I'm really thankful for uh, are the, uh, the Giffords who are coming home. So um, this is not Chris Gifford's first rodeo in the 480th. It's not his second, it's not his third, right? He's been around uh, our wing numerous times. And if you look at his bio and my bio uh, really closely, you'll see an overlap in the 13th Intelligence Squadron. And I was a squadron commander and Giff was my DO. So uh, there has been an evil plan that has played out perfectly. <laughs> And, uh, you know, um, I am truly grateful for that to get uh, you and Becky and the kids back in, back in the family, if you will, back home. Uh, you're going to do phenomenal. And I tell you what, if there are two men who, have, who share the same ethos and the same mindset uh, about the mission and about the airmen, they're sitting on the stage right now. It's going to be amazing to see what happens uh, under, under uh, Giff's uh, leadership. And... Um, I tell you, you know, so I'll just wrap up by saying that I, you know, we live in an uncertain world, so I can't even, you know, a year ago, if you told me uh, stuff that would be happening today, I would probably tell you you're crazy. And I am not even going to try to predict what's going to happen a year from now. But I will tell you that uh, there's one thing I will predict. In fact, there's one thing I will guarantee is that the 497th ISR group under Chris Gifford's leadership will be crushing it because they were a team of teams built and cared for and developed by a bald man from Tennessee. <laughs> Thank you to all the airmen of the 497. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Attention to orders. Citation to accompany the award of the Legion of Merit to Colonel Shane A. Smith. Colonel Shane A. Smith distinguished himself by exceptionally meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding service to the United States as Commander 497th Intelligence Surveillance and Reconnaissance Group, 480th Intelligence Surveillance and Reconnaissance Wing, Joint Base Langley Eustis, Virginia, from 10 July 2015 to 20 June 2017. During this period, the exemplary ability, diligence, and devotion to duty of Colonel Smith were instrumental factors in the resolution of many complex problems of major importance to the Air Force. While leading a team of 1,500 airmen, he supported over 8,000 sorties. A true visionary, Colonel Smith developed the wing's first Coalition Forces Air Component Commander Analysis Cell from construction to execution, ensuring 546 targets were characterized and delivered in support of Operation Inherent Resolve, eliminating 350 enemy bomb production sites and enabling the rollback of the Islamic State in Iraq and Al-Sham in Iraq and Syria, boosting the quality of life for his airmen 
Colonel Smith built a new mission schedule for his overworked airmen, cutting duty hours by 33% and meeting the wing's number one priority of ensuring a sustainable intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance force into the future. Furthermore, he spearheaded over $2 million in facility upgrades, reorganizing the, the distributed ground station one operations floor with no mission loss while, while replacing climate control equipment, adding a new parking lot and safety crosswalks and, construct, and constructing a new operational medical element facility, which allowed medical appointments to take place within the group's own facility. Finally, his vision and initiative enabled U-2 sensors to operate without previously required satellite communications relay equipment, enabling the equipment stationed outside the continental United States to be redeployed for the first time in 19 years, cutting annual deployment requirements for 34 airmen and saving the Air Force $25 million per year. The superior initiative, outstanding leadership, and personal endeavor displayed by Colonel Smith reflect great credit upon himself and the United States Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Actually, go ahead and put the formations at ease, please. All right, good morning and welcome to all the previously identified distinguished visitors and to everyone in the crowd today. Your presence among us honors us. A special welcome, actually a welcome back, goes to Colonel Chris Gifford. Colonel Gifford is extremely well prepared for this job. When I look across the list of commanders that this group has previously had, there is no one whose background has prepared him to take this position better. His experience with our mission and inside the wing is extensive. He started out at DGS-1 right of Intel, out of Intel Tech School, working in the 10th and 30th Intel squadrons. He later served as a DO as the boss highlighted at DGS-2 and a squadron commander at DGS-5. We worked together during the first year of the counter-Islamic State fight when he was the absent Deputy A2 and I was the Chief of the ISR Division at the CAOC. And he spent the last year working DCGS issues on the Air Staff. I made the same statement when Colonel Brown was selected to be the Wing Commander and I've sincerely meant it on both occasions. These are the two most well-prepared individuals to ever sit in the chairs that they're gonna sit in. They're going to be a great team, and I sincerely look forward to all that you two are going to accomplish together. As an outgoing commander, you quickly realize that there will never be enough time to get done all that you wanted to do and that too many good things go unsaid. So my main purpose up here today is to simply say thank you. In that arena, pride of place always goes to my wife, Selena. As we prepare for our 15th move together, I thank you for your continued support as we head off to Texas, where like thousands of Tennesseans before us, we will continue to keep it free. <laughs> My thanks go out to now Brigadier General Hawk and to Colonel Brown. They have legitimately and honestly made this a great experience for me. Uh, it, the support has been phenomenal out of both of you and your staff. To our Air Base Wing partners, thank you for all that you do for our airmen on a daily basis. A couple of highlights I'd like to make is a special thank you to the MED Group for helping us plan that operational medical element space. And also to the Mission Support Group for helping us continue to pursue ever better ways to feed our shift workers. And oh yeah, thank you for putting that Starbucks in my building. <laughs> that was definitely a good call. To our 363rd ISR wing partners, thank you. If you go to the second floor of our building, you will find a workspace that is unique to anywhere in the Air Force. In that workspace, you will find 363rd targeteers sitting side by side with our analyst submission crews as we work together to jointly prosecute the counter-Islamic state fight. 
They have been great teammates. And now to the people of the hour. Thank you to the airmen of the 497th ISR group, some of whom are standing in these formations along that back wall, sitting in those chairs, but many of whom are in our building right now taking the fight to the Islamic State even as I speak. Thank you for all that you've done and what has really just seemed like a blink of an eye to me. Today is not about anybody on this stage. It's about each and every one of you. Change of command ceremonies are in reality just an opportunity to reflect upon the accomplishment of the organization involved. And your list of accomplishments have been long. You heard a medal read about me and that medal is actually your medal. You did all those things. When you look at your list, you maintained a network with more storage than Netflix and a 99% availability rate, all while doing that total reorg of our operations floor. You brought home that U2 relay equipment, saving that $25 million in 34 deployments. You planned and carried out that functional realignment of our squadrons and the total overhaul of most of our mission schedules in order to make our mission more effective and to make our weapon system more sustainable over the long term. You planned over $4 million in construction projects, $2 million of which the boss highlighted, $2 million of which you're gonna see the fruits of your own labors here in the near future as an innovation lab, a mission planning room, a nipper cafe, a total overall of security layout of our lobby and the biggie for me, the complete renovation of our ops floor lighting, where for the first time that lighting will be scientifically optimized for both humans and the mission. You put together a functional fitness integrated training program that brought together dietitians, exercise specialists, and medical professionals to create a program that greatly enhanced the health and fitness of the over 300 airmen who participated. You conducted and participated in remote combat stress studies that now not only benefit you, but will benefit generations of airmen to come as those are incorporated into tech training programs. And I could go on and on. And all that's before I turn to your effects on the battlefield. And that arena, to paraphrase General George Patton as he was talking to his troops in June of 1944, before they were inserted on the European continent, one day when you grow older and one of your grandchildren climbs up on your lap and asks you what you did in your time in the Air Force, you will not have to tell them you shovel crap in Louisiana. <laughs> you can tell them that you took the fight to the Islamic State and you did it magnificently. You have already rolled them back along the battlefields of Iraq and Syria. Mosul will soon completely fall and Raqqa is not far behind it. No matter where they go next, you will hunt them down. You have already eliminated a laundry list of their leaders and entire generations of their most experienced foot soldiers. You have literally destroyed billions of dollars from their coffers by finding and analyzing their banking and oil networks, allowing those to be targeted. And lest anyone ever have the audacity to question your dedication, as the boss highlighted, over 125 of you slept on cots in our building for days in order to keep taking the fight to the enemy. I told you roughly 22 months ago that as long as people like you were in the fight, the Islamic State was already defeated on the battlefield. They simply did not know it yet. You have proved that statement more accurate every single day. As I prepare to walk off this stage, I call upon each and every one of the almost 1,600 active duty, guard, reserve, civilian, and contract members of the 497th team to have a deep abiding pride in what you do. No matter what office you work in, no matter what AFSC you carry, what you do matters, and I am proud of you. It has truly been my honor to serve as your commander. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Smith. We will now execute the change of command ceremony. Publish your order. The ceremony you are about to witness is one of the briefest yet most significant of our military ceremonies. All authority and responsibility are vested in the hands of the commander, a chain unbroken, to the commander in chief, the President of the United States. 
No unit may ever be without a commander, so today when Colonel Smith relinquishes command, all authority and responsibility for the 497th ISR group is immediately transferred to Colonel Gifford. The passing of the guide on culminates a series of significant achievements under Colonel Smith's leadership, foresight, and guidance, and reflects great confidence in the continuance of these achievements to come under the command of Colonel Gifford. Ladies and gentlemen, stay, please stand. The official party will now execute the change of command. Attention to orders. Special order number G1717, by order of the commander, 480th Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance Wing, Colonel Jason M. Brown, Colonel Christopher W. Gifford, assumes command of the 497th Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance Group, Joint Base Langley-Eustis, Virginia, from Colonel Shane A. Smith, effective 20 June 2017. Sir, I relinquish command. Sir, I assume command. Gentlemen, the commander of the 497th Intelligence Surveillance and Reconnaissance Group, Colonel Christopher Gifford. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you so much for being here. Welcome, uh, colonels, commanders, chiefs, first sergeants, family, and friends, and especially the men and women, the airmen of the 497th ISR Group in DGS 1. Uh, I want to thank everybody who made today happen both planning and uh, executing today's ceremony, especially Lieutenant Scott. I was in your shoes here about 16 years ago working the group change of command ceremony, and I never thought I would be on the other end of this. Uh, I just got handed the best job in the United States Air Force, and I could not be happier. I'm absolutely a kid on Christmas morning, and there's nowhere else I'd rather be than right here with the airmen of the 497th ISR group. Colonel Brown, sir, Thank you so much for hiring me again, and I'm glad that the evil plan worked out. Thank you for having the faith in me to lead our airmen in this mission. Thank you uh, to you and Allie for your friendship. Thank you for your mentorship and vision. It is truly an honor to work with you again. And as Becky can attest, I'd always hoped that this would work out, that I'd get to work for you again, but never dreamed that it would happen. But as I've, as I've told him and Shane on, on many occasions, this is absolutely my dream job and a dream come true. I'd like to thank Shane and Selena for making this such an easy transition for us. Uh, it's been incredibly smooth, and Shane, there's no one I would rather follow than you, my friend. Uh, your shoes are, are some big ones to fill, brother, but this is a group that is knocking it out of the park because of your leadership. What I have heard most often about Colonel Smith is this. He is the best boss I have ever had. Uh, that's telling, and we heard a lot about that today, but I too, I'm a big fan because, as Shane mentioned, uh, we worked together, AFCENT, Air Forces Central, and I was there at the CAOC with, uh, with Ed Blitt, uh, who's coming in, and Shane, who's coming in as the ISR D chief. Uh, and man, it was a, that was a dicey year as, as Mosul fell and we worked through that. But you kept me sane, and brother, I hope we, we help keep you sane as well. Uh, I will endeavor to continue your great work. You are imminently cool under fire brilliant and a great friend. I salute you, sir. I'd also like to thank today my family, Becky, Olivia, and Jack. Uh, we haven't had quite as many moves as the Smiths. I think this is our, our ninth since getting married. Thank you for hanging with me. Thank you for allowing me to do what I love, which is lead airmen and contribute to national defense. Uh, I know it hasn't been easy through the deployments, the night shifts, and there will be more of those, uh, and uh, missed holidays, missed birthdays. Uh, I just got to brag real quick. They've helped me through everything, you know, PT tests. Uh, my wife, my best friend, the love of my life, mother of dragons, is a teacher, and uh, she does her part to make this world a better place. And honestly, of the two of us, she's the one who's actually good at her job. I'm proud of you, babe. Uh, I'd also like to thank or, or point out how much I just, just love and adore uh, my athlete and my artist. Uh, thank you, kids. 
So I also have with me today my Uncle Jim and my cousin Elise and my uh, father-in-law and mother-in-law. Thank you for being here and making the trip. Uh, a ton of friends out here today. It's like a family reunion. It's great coming back here and being with all of you. And particular thanks for those who traveled, uh, Doug and Krista, uh, Stan and Sean, my friends from the Indiana Air National Guard who flew in today. Thank you for taking time out to be here. We should all be so lucky to be this blessed. I don't deserve it, but I'll take it. I just want to talk briefly today about our airmen at DGS-1, and I want to talk about how proud I am to, to, to be part of your team, but briefly mention what it was like to observe you as an outsider looking in these last couple years. So I mentioned in 2014 when Mosul fell and Shane and I were out at the CAOC, uh, the Combined Air Operations Center at LUD, and everybody was losing their minds, but not DGS-1. I had a million and one problems as an A2 Ford. You weren't one of them. Uh, as a matter of fact, everything we asked you to do, you stepped up to and went above and beyond. And I was continually amazed. And what you contributed to, but may not have really realized, was that your efforts ensured basing rights and partner participation in the coalition that's been rolling back ISIS. And as previously mentioned, you helped shape the future and revitalize deliberate targeting in the longest deliberate targeting campaign that this nation has fought since Vietnam. Uh, and it didn't stop there. So in my, my previous job at the Pentagon, I watched uh, as you innovated with structured observation management and built your own full motion video toolkits. I watched as you stood up to uh, the innovation summits, your innovation lab, the SGA role, the SPEAR, 10th IS airmen, cyber experts rolling in to help with deliberate targeting. It is absolutely amazing. Thank you for your commitment to the mission, your tireless dedication to our great nation. Thank you for innovating, as Colonel Brown mentioned earlier, fighting to find a better way. I am beyond proud, humbled, and honored to serve with you and be part of your team, and I look forward to helping you make a difference. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Gifford. The men and women of the 497th Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance Group would like to extend a warm welcome to you and your family. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the Air Force song and remain standing for the departure of the official party and their special guests. Group. One, One, Off we go into the wild blue yonder, climbing high into the sun. Here they come, soon to be our plunder. And boys, here are the guns, here are the guns. And we die, starting our planes from under, off with one hell of a roar. We live in the pain, we're down in the flames. Hey, nothing can stop the U.S. Air Force. This concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for attending. Please join us for a reception and proceed through the receiving line to welcome Colonel Gifford and his family. Squadron, take command of your squadron. Who fight? Squadron. 